Well, hello, and welcome back to Engineer's Escape. My name's Jake, and today I'd like to share a Christmas memory. For as far back as I can remember, we always decorated for Christmas. The family put up lights, hung stockings, and decorated the tree. It was my job to set up the model train, my Christmas choo-choo, to circle the tree. I would carefully click together the railroad and place the train cars on the tracks. I even added small presents in the yellow car. Pressing the start button, the train would click clack and choo-choo. Just look at how the locomotive moves. Awesome. This is a main reason at an early age I got interested in tinkering and learning how things work. Another amazing feature about my Christmas choo-choo is that it puffs smoke just like a real train. At least, it did. That feature hasn't worked for many years now. And this year, we're going to fix it. This is Echo, the classic rail. I've always loved this locomotive. Just look at all the details, features, and mechanisms. Here's the wood car that has the switch and batteries. You can see that it can go in forward or reverse. And check out that little guy. This plug goes into the back of the locomotive. This bell acts like a switch to turn the whistle on and blow smoke. You put oil in the small front hole, and smoke comes out the middle. Here is the instruction label for operating the smoke unit. It looks like these plastic tabs hold the body on. There's also a large plastic tab inside here. Let's remove these four screws. The red conductor cab slides off. I struggled to remove the locomotive body for some time. I checked for more fasteners, but couldn't find any. So I did what any logical person would do, and smacked it with a mallet. It eventually came loose. If you have one of these, be sure to note there are actually screws underneath the Echo stickers on both sides. You can see the spring-loaded whistle mechanism and top flap to stop the whistle. I turned the train on to investigate further. The air comes from the whistle and goes up through the black tube to the smokestack. At this point, I was thoroughly confused. I had already tried pulling off the stack, but couldn't figure it out. The oil couldn't be burning in this main part here. There were still these red and blue wires that went up to the stack. After lots of twisting and pulling on the stack, I figured out the top black part could be popped off with a flat screwdriver. After cleaning up some oil, I decided I would troubleshoot using a voltmeter. I first connected the green power car to check the source voltage. You can see we get about 8.8 .8 volts, and the polarity changes when the switch is pressed between forward and reverse. Next, I plugged in the locomotive and tested the leads at the smoke unit. 
When the train is under load, you can see we get between 6.4 and 7 volts. When the whistle blows, it causes more voltage sag too. Since there didn't seem to be any issues with the wiring connections, I wanted to take a closer look at the smoke unit itself. I removed the two screws holding it in place. I also removed the two screws holding the gold ring to the bottom cone of the stack. At this point, the bottom part of the stack finally broke all the way off. I'll have to glue it back together later. I added some oil to the unit and prodded around inside with a paper clip. There was some cotton wick inside. After giving it one more try with no smoke, I concluded the unit heating element had burnt out. I looked online for a direct replacement, but could only find people selling the entire train set, so I set out to find a model train smoke unit that would fit the bill. I was hoping to find a smoke unit that had a range of 6 to 10 volts. I also wanted something that wouldn't get too hot, as I was concerned the plastic smoke stack may eventually melt. The best I found was the Zoita 99E smoke generator. It was advertised as being for between 8 and 14 volts, safe for plastic, and was small enough to fit. I figured maybe with 6 fresh C batteries, we had a chance of getting to the minimum 8 volts needed at the stack. Let's remove the old smoke unit. Here's the packing slip for the new unit. It arrived a few days later. I drilled the middle hole slightly larger using a 7 seconds inch drill bit. I then placed the smoker in and covered up the other front hole with electrical tape. I soldered the connections and prepared to test it out. I was hoping if this test worked, the whole unit would work. And the unit does appear to be smoking. I removed the rubber tube to make more room and glued the stack back on. I fired up the train again for a final test, and now it hardly smoked at all. I added another drop of oil to try one more time. How disappointing. And just like that, Christmas of 2020, like most of the year, was ruined. I'm just kidding. Let's see what happens next. Let's get this working. I remembered that I have a LiPo. And it looks like it's the correct voltage. I'll just set it in the yellow car. I removed and extended the leads to the smoker. I then routed them through the locomotive. I drilled a little notch in the red cab to make room for the new wires. I soldered on an XT60 connector and taped it up. Let's plug it in and try one more time. Yes, look at that. Smoking amazingly. Let's set it up and try it out for real.
May the train continue to smoke, click clack, and choo choo for many more years. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me. Merry Christmas, and may God bless you this holiday season and this coming year.